thing is that I leave in a blaze of glory. I mean, I have to. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm just not Miss Hot Tamale anymore. I have to, I have to leave in a blaze of glory. Just, just go out there and do my little dance. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to Inside GCT for the Miss Firecracker Contest. Uh, before we get started, I want to just say a couple of quick announcements. Um, we're really excited about the renovations that we're doing here to our physical space, and we invite everyone to come out and look at them and experience them, and you certainly will be able to on opening night of the Miss Firecracker Contest, which is next Friday, one week from today, and we really hope to see everyone there. So thank you for coming out. Co some other things very quickly. We are very, very honored to announce that we have been chosen by Arts Memphis to receive an Arts Memphis Enhancement Grant. It's a very great thing for Germantown Community Theater. And part of that Arts uh, Enhancement Grant is actually going to go to a renovation of our lighting facilities. So we will be kicking off with this show, the Miss Firecracker Contest, a matching donation program for donors to donate into the enhancement grant so that we can match our funds with the funds that are given to us by Arts Memphis. We are really excited about that. So let me have a seat and I'll introduce our director. Hi, Julie. Hi. So let me introduce Julie to you. This is Ms. Julie Reinbold, and she's been a theater educator for 18 years. She received her bachelor's degree from Vanderbilt University and her master's degree from the University of Northern Colorado. She's an actress, having appeared in her first real play when she was in second grade. Some of her favorite roles include Miss Thorne in Ruthless, both at Theater Memphis and here at GCT, Sonia in Godspell, and Emma in Ten Types. She's also a director, having directed productions both at her school and in the community. One of her proudest directing moments was staging the Mid-South premiere of the school edition of Les Mis at Ridgeway High School in 2004. She also enjoyed the challenge of fitting a cast of 30 adults and children on this very stage, actually when it was elevated, for her production of Oliver in 2006. She was the founder and first teacher director for GCT's Fun in Theater program 15 years ago, and she still loves working with GCT's families and young people today. She has two adorable nephews, Andy and Jackson, who are her favorite people on the planet. Yep. <laughs> she wants to thank the support of GCT and of live theater in our community. So Julie, welcome. Thanks, thank you. So for starters, just to kick us off, tell us about Julie Reinbold, what makes you tick? Introduce yourself to us. Well, you just introduced me. <laughs> um, but um, I'm a teacher and um, I love theater. One of my students the other day said that she was gonna get me a teacher that said, eat, sleep, theater. And it's pretty accurate, I think. <laughs> That's how I spend most of my time is um, not eating and sleeping, but doing a lot of theater. And, um, and I have done it since I was in second grade and um, I was a bunny in the Velveteen Rabbit, and I think at that point the theater bug had bitten, and I've been involved in it ever since. So, Well, that's great. I know you said in your bio that your nephews are your favorite people on the planet. Before we get into talking about the Miss Firecracker contest, tell us about your nephews and why they're your favorite people on the planet. Oh, I have two nephews. One um, is nine, his name is Andy, and one who's four, whose name is Jackson, and um, they just keep us entertained all the time. and. Um, they actually, well, Jackson may be my actor, actually, but Andy doesn't really like being in plays, but he did do our production of Shrek, the musical, last spring. He was the young Shrek in that, and he was really cute. So, And they're actually going to both be in Susical at my school later this spring. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's so. really great. So tell us about the show, The Miss Firecracker Contest. Well, um, the Miss Firecracker Contest is written by Beth Henley. Mm -hmm. It's um, set in a small town, um, Brookhaven, Mississippi, so deep south. And um, 
It is about a young woman named Carnell who decides that she wants to be in a beauty contest. And she's an unlikely beauty contest competitor. Um, so, <laughs> um, so she decides to enter it and um, she and her cousins with whom she grew up and um, a couple of other characters help her through that journey of, of entering the Miss Firecracker contest. So she's, I guess she's sort of the underdog, or she is the underdog, and um, it's interesting to see the process she goes through. Okay. Now, there's a movie version of this, correct? There is, with Holly Hunter. Okay, great. So talk to us about the differences in the movie and what we will see on our stage here. Well, the movie has a whole lot more of the locations, obviously, than the sure. play. The play has two locations. The play has the living room of um, Carnell's, the house where she grew up, and also the fairgrounds um, in the second act. So it has only two locations. And um, the movie shows a, a bunch of different locations. It has uh, like places at the carnival, and it has um, places in town. And I mean, just I think that's probably the big difference is that there are a whole lot more locations in the movie than there are in the play. And, and of course, this production is going to be better than that. Oh, yes, of course. Okay, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. So um, tell us about what we're seeing behind us. Talk to us a little bit more about this. So this is the set for Act One, and um, it is Aunt Ronnell's house. Aunt Ronnell is um, no longer living. Um, she's died, and um, <laughs> she she's, has an interesting um, illness where she ends up looking like a monkey before she dies. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you'll have to come see the play to understand that. But um, anyway, this is uh, the living room of Carnell's house, Aunt Ronnell's house. and. Um, and then it transforms in the second act to be in the carnival, at the carnival where the Miss Firecracker contest is gonna take place. All right, um, so how did this set come into be? How, how did you formulate this idea and, and working with other people? What, how does this happen? How does the process of putting together the set? Right. Um, well, we knew we needed those two locations, that we needed um, the living room, and then we needed to be able to transform it to this other location, and so, um, we, I wanted the set to be very claustrophobic feeling because I feel as if the characters in this play really want to get out. Like they want to, like Cornell wants to get out of by uh, not by Helia, Brookhaven, Mississippi. <laughs> I'm by Helia's local. Um, and um, Delmont, her cousin, wants, he's gotten out of a mental institution, so he really wants out and all of these. So I wanted the feeling the audience and the, um, characters to feel very claustrophobic, at least in the first act, where um, that feeling of oppressed and, and wanting freedom was really conveyed through the set. Right, and we know that we haven't quite finished the build, so there's much more to make this feel much more uh, claustrophobic. Right, right. So that's going to be very exciting. So you said that one of the characters has just been released from a mental institute. Yes. <laughs> Can you talk to us a little bit more about that? How does um, that play into the plot? Well, Delmont is um, Carnell's cousin, and she grew up with uh, him and her cousin Elaine. And um, yes, Delmont has just been released from a mental institution because he got uh, engaged in a brawl <laughs> with, uh, over a woman. And, um, and so a judge sentenced him to a mental institution time in a mental institution instead of going to jail, so. Okay. <laughs> so tell us about your cast. Who is playing what roles, and how did you come about casting them in those roles? Okay, um, Shelly Yeager is playing Carnell. Um, Meredith Koch is playing Tessie. Um, Michael Bouchard is playing um, Delmont. Shauna Gardner is playing um, Elaine. And Becca Lipscomb is playing Popeye, and Jason Wolfkill is playing Max Sam. Yay. I got, <laughs> <laughs> got all of those. Um, and um, we were really lucky with the auditions for Miss Firecracker, actually. Um, we didn't have to go outside of the audition at all. We were able to cast it from the uh, initial audition, which was really exciting. And um, they just, I, they were just, they, they're doing a great job. They were, um, Shelly was, came in and was, so funny and just really, really pop that, uh, pop the audition, the personality of Carnell, and, um, and then all the other pieces just sort of fell into place, so. That's great, that's great. Tell us about your creative process as a director. Um, well, um, my creative process, I guess, obviously the first thing um, that 
any director or any designer has to do is read the script, read the script, read the script, and get really familiar with the script. And that's the one thing that I drill into my students as well, is that the first thing you always do as, as a director or anything is that you have to read the script. Um, and then from there, um, you know, figuring out sort of what the theme, thematic, um, the theme of the play is and sort of um, what direction I want to take it as far as that goes. And so for this show, like I said, I really wanted that feeling of the desire for freedom and wanting out. And so then I take that concept and sort of let it inform everything else that happens in the show. Okay. So uh, in our space at GCT, our casts rehearse in a different location. Mm -hmm. So how do you work with actors to transition from the rehearsal space, which may be uniquely different from this space, mm -hmm. to then transitioning into this actual space? Well, I, I think that you have to make sure that the rehearsal hall space is um, equipped with some semblance of what is happening in here. And so we made sure that we taped off the space so that it was, at least dimension-wise, was the same as this space. And, um, and then we got some rehearsal furniture and um, and they, actors, at least most actors, or my actors in this show anyway, um, they tend, they're pretty flexible. So by the time we got in here, they, they had to make some adjustments, but sure. they, were, they were okay with that. So that was good. That's great. So um, what is one of your favorite directing moments thus far in this process? Oh, this show has been really fun to direct. Like it, it, as many times as I've seen it, they make me laugh every night. And so that's been really a fun part of this process is that they just, um, I, they're with new discoveries and um, I mean really times where I just, they just make me laugh out loud with the things that they do. So that's probably been the most, the most fun part of this process. So what was the most difficult part of this process? Um, there, well, I, I think figuring out like how we were going to make this set happen in this particular space it was is a is a challenge. Um, uh, Max Sam's uh, coughs up blood, and um, and that was the first thing that when I read the script, I thought, how are we going to do that? How are we going to make it look really like he's coughing up blood? And so that was another challenge. Um, I don't. We have several places where Shelly Carnell has to change costumes and relatively quickly, so we'll see if that's a challenge on Sunday <laughs> um, when we start dress rehearsal. <laughs> but, um, but I guess probably the biggest thing has been trying to figure out um, the set in this space, in this small space. So, so you, you teach school. I do. And you direct productions at your school. I do. What is the difference in directing a production at your school and directing a production in the community? <laughs> um, well, this one has all grown-ups, which has been really exciting <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, I don't do that very often, I, and, I, and I love directing children, so that's, nothing, that's not to say that um, there's anything less legitimate about that, because I think it's very legitimate kind of theater. But um, this show has been fun because I have had all grown-ups. It's been fun to not have to say, we have to be done at 9.30 because your mom is outside waiting for you. <laughs> you know, it's nice that there are grown people who can go and get in their cars <laughs> and go home. <laughs> um, so that's been nice. But, um, and then I, I, it's, it's nice for me to have other professionals to work with because at my school I kind of do it all. Like I'm sort of the, a one-man show at my school. And um, so it's nice to have a staff to work with and to um, bounce ideas off with, and have them bring their expertise to this process as well. So tell us, thinking back in your career, what is um, one of your favorite moments of directing um, across all of the shows that you've done? What's one of your favorite shows and what's a favorite moment for you? Oh gosh, that's really hard because I, I, I pretty much love all of the shows that I've gotten to work on. I always feel, I feel like any show that I've gotten to act in or direct in, that it's, it's a privilege to get to do it. And, um, and so that's hard for me to narrow down. but. Um, well, we mentioned Oliver already. Like that was so fun that that show because it was so big. I mean, it was thirty plus adults and kids on this stage, and um, and we we were just talking about it. We um, had a staircase that came down from the attic, and the boys entered, and um, so that was really a bit like it was. I had seen a show at another theater in town that I won't name, but <laughs> where they had a very large cast in a relatively small space, 
and um, the, it looked very crowded on the stage. And I remember thinking before I started Oliver, I don't want my show to look like that. Like I don't want my show to look really crowded. I want there to, to, to be ample room. And so we made sure when we built the set that we had lots of levels and um, and I think, and I, I'm biased, I know, because it was my show, but I think that we really accomplished that in this space. And so that was really exciting for me. Um, and then I guess um, I, my other favorite moment or my other favorite show was we did Les Mis at my school in 2004. And we were the first high school in the Mid-South to do the school edition of Les Mis. And um, it was a community effort. Like it was the faculty, the students, the parents, everybody came together because it was a huge undertaking for us because I teach at a, you know, a public high school and um, it was a huge undertaking but we were so proud of it and um, by the third, we only did three performances and by the third performance we had almost a thousand people that came to see it. So it was really exciting. Now all thousand of those are coming to see this show, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, sure. great. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so uh, I know that you, your stage manager for this show has also worked with you in the past. Uh -huh. Can you talk to us about him and who is he and, and how special is he? Oh, my stage manager is Ontario McGregor and um, he's one of my students. He's a senior this year. And that's, I should also say Becca Lipscomb who is um, Popeye in the production. She's also a former student of mine. And, um, and so that's really fun for me that they, still want to do theater and they still want to work with me. So that's exciting. Um, but Ontario um, is a senior this year at Ridgeway and um, he's just a great kid. He, and he just loves theater. He loves acting. He loves just being in the theater and, um, and everybody loves him. So, and I think he's, um, my actors love him, the way he gives line notes. They just, they think he's, I think they think he's more exciting than I am uh, <laughs> when, I, when I give notes. But anyway, so he's great. Well, that's, that's very good. Um, um, beyond the Miss Firecracker contest, what, what are your plans beyond the show? What, what else is going on in, in the life of Julie Reinbold? Um, well, I'm currently directing Susical the Musical at my school. And um, so I'm going to be, uh, I mean, we're already rehearsing for that, so that goes up the end of March. So that's really the next project, I guess, um, other than that. And then um, maybe maybe a break sometime. <laughs> um, so is it difficult to have two shows rehearsing at the same time? You have this show rehearsing, you've got Suzical. How do you balance that? How does that work? Um, it is challenging. I'm, I'm used to it. I, I do it a lot. Like, I, I end up having, you know, dual commitments a lot. But, and since this one's in the evening and that one's after school, and it is two months from now. So it's a little, you know, that's really in the early stages. And um, so the overlap is not that, it's not, I mean, the rehearsal overlap is there, but the actual intense rehearsal work for Susical won't be until, like, February and March. So, um it's not been too bad. So the title of our show here is the Miss Firecracker Contest, yes. and it's about a beauty pageant. Do we get to see beauty pageant moments? Um, you don't actually see the beauty pageant. You see preparation for the beauty pageant, and you hear about the beauty pageant. So you hear, like, oh, we do, well, we do get to see um, Carnell's talent. Um, that play starts with that, so. Um, yeah, so her talent routine is quite something. Involves tapping and marching and baton twirling, so that's <laughs> um, <laughs> quite spectacular. Um, but, uh, but we do see that moment. And then in the second act, you see her coming on, um, reporting on what's going on, not reporting, but saying you know, what has happened on stage. And then the other characters also comment on that. So Tessie, for example, um, Meredith's character, is always saying 17 minutes to the opening parade of firecrackers or 27 minutes to whatever so they keep us um, updated on what's happening but you don't ever actually see the contest okay itself but you do see the results of the contest oh okay eventually Great. <laughs> so one more question before we dive into the famous 10 questions <laughs> um, i asked before we came in here of some of your cast who were here and of yourself if you all were ready to open a week from today uh -huh. So knowing that you're a week out, what does it feel like to be a director whose show opens seven days from this moment? Um, I'm really, like, sometimes I've, in this position, I've been a lot more nervous than I am now. I, I'm not really nervous. I'm, my cast has been just awesome, and um, I'm not concerned about that aspect of the show at all. I think they're going to do a great job. 
Um, it's there are just logistical things that have to come together in the next week, and um, I want to, you know, that doesn't make me nervous, but I, I want to see that all come together in, in, a, in a good way. And so that's the only thing that, um, that I, I wouldn't say I'm worried about it, but I just want to see it come together. So. Okay, I lied one more before we dive in, but that is, so what happens between now and next Friday when, we, when the show opens? What does that process look like for the actors and for you? So we have another rehearsal tonight. We've been rehearsing all week, and we'll have a rehearsal tonight. And then we have a um, dry tech rehearsal tomorrow, which is um, without actors. And so they don't have to come to that, but that will be with our lighting designer, Melissa um, Andrews is her new name, and um, with the technical director, with Justin. And um, we'll work out all the technical things tomorrow during our dry tech. And the actors will get a break because they've been rehearsing every night this week. And, um, and then Sunday afternoon, we'll have our first dress rehearsal. So Robin Owens, who is um, wonderfully, well, she's wonderful, and she's doing our costumes. Um, she'll have all of that here on Sunday for the actors to wear their costumes for the first time. And then um, we'll have dress rehearsals. We'll have a dress rehearsal Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And then we have our first preview, or yeah, first preview on Wednesday. So very exciting. Yeah, so it is exciting. It's a lot in one week. <laughs> okay, you ready for these? Sure. Okay. What is your favorite word? Um, my favorite word, I had a, um, a boy in high school who told me one time that I was loquacious. So I, I've always liked the word loquacious. <laughs> I think we had another director who may have used that word really? as well. <laughs> what is your least favorite word? Well, this, okay. My least for favorite word is lapel, and I'll explain why. That's, that's a weird word, I know. Um, it's because when I was young, I used to read a lot, and I would read words and pronounce them in my head, but didn't always know really how to pronounce them. So I always pronounced the word lapel, I still have to think about it, as lapel. And so <laughs> now when I say lapel, I have to stop and think about that every time I say it. Because I think for so many years, I read it not correct. Like, I didn't say it correctly or, or whatever. And so that's one of those words that I don't like because I have to really think about it. I okay. know how to pronounce it, but I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what turns you on? Um, I would say good conversation and thought-provoking questions. <laughs> what turns you off? Um, People who are like a situations where, like a group situation where people dominate the group dynamic. So that's really off-putting, I think, where people don't listen to each other, they have to jump in and talk all the time, and um, that's very off-putting. And it's one of those group dynamics things that I think everybody should have to learn. <laughs> what sound do you love? Um, I, I'm going to sound like a broken record because I talked about my nephews a lot, but that would be my, the sound of their laughter and, um, and it really any child's laughter. I love babies, their belly laugh. I love that whole, um, that whole dynamic, so. What sound do you hate? Off-pitch singing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what is your favorite curse word? Well, I'm a teacher, so I have to not use curse words. I have to sort of edit myself a lot, um, even though I'd like to use curse words sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I don't very often. But when I was younger, my family, we always said feathers. So that's a good one. That's a good, it's not really a curse word, but it kind of fills in for feathers, you know? So I use that and sugar a lot, both of those. But I also have a favorite one from the play, um, that I think I'm going to adopt, which is good lord and butter. <laughs> good lord yeah. and butter. That's Delmont's expression, and I really like it, so I think I'm going to adopt that good lord and butter. All right. <laughs> what profession other than yours would you like to attempt? Um, that's, that's an interesting one. I, I have several things that I, I think about doing, but I love books, so I, I think that I would love to, like, have a bookshop or work in a bookshop or something at some point. I, I've thought maybe a librarian. When I was little, I used to say I wanted to be a librarian because I like books so much. But nowadays, librarians are so much more, like, it's all tech stuff and, 
it's not as much book oriented. And so I, I would want to be someplace where it was about the books. Okay. What profession would you not like to do? I'm glad there are people who like to work with older adults, like grandparents, nursing homes, whatever, but I don't think I could ever do that. Hmm. So, um, and I'm, but I'm, I mean, I'm appreciative of older people and I'm not, but <laughs> th there's no discrimination against <laughs> older people. I just don't, I just don't really like that environment very much, so. All right, I'm sure there are plenty who would agree. <laughs> If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? I would like him to say welcome, and who would you like to talk to first? All right, <laughs> great. So before we open up to question and answer, okay, is last chance to tell the audience, the viewing audience, the audience <laughs> here, something critical about the show or some little tidbit, this is your last chance to give us a, a sound bite. Um, this show is funny and it's I, I would I, I would say that it's um, southern gothic in that it's got definitely a, a dark sort of side to the humor but it's funny and the characters are quirky and unique and yet you know them so even though they're very unique people like on stage you'll there are things about every character that you're like I know that person I've seen her you know I've talked to her or whatever so I would say that's the fun thing about Beth Henley and her writing in the show. All right, well, thank you. Are there any questions from our audience? Yes? Would you rather be in the play or direct the play? Uh, the question was, would you rather be in the play or direct the play? I really like to act, um, and so I, I like that part of it, but um, I, I also really like to direct, so I think it depends on the project. Um, as to whether I would rather act in it or direct in it. And there are some shows that I would really be torn, like whether I want to direct it or audition for it. But this show, I don't think there's, I, I don't think there's really a role for me, so I'm, I'm happy to get to direct it. <laughs> okay, great. Another question. Yes? As a director, do you prefer musicals or straight comedy dramas? So the question was, as a director, do you prefer musicals or straight plays or dramas, comedies? Um, I have to say that I am a musical girl. Like I, I really, I really like musicals. So uh, I guess if I had, if I had to choose between the two, I would choose a musical. But I do think that there's something to be said for directing a, a straight musical. I mean, straight um, comedy or drama. There's a, it, not that it's a lot less work, but it's a lot less work. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, truth be told. Um, so there's a lot less that goes into, you know, in a lot of ways to a straight show than there is a musical, so. Okay, another question? Yes. So Beth Henley is, uh, you know, she's kind of known for Southern Gothic uh, type of writing, and I was wondering how has your experience as a Southerner, or if you don't call yourself a Southerner, at least someone living in the South, how have those experiences influenced your let me see if I can summarize that. Okay. <laughs> That's a great question. The question was, this is set in the South. This play is set in the South. How, you living in the South, how has that influenced the way you directed the show? Or has it? No, uh, oh, definitely. I, I, consider, I do consider myself a Southerner. I, we moved to Tennessee when I was in second grade. And I've lived in all three parts of the state. I lived in East Tennessee and then went to college in Middle Tennessee and now live in West Tennessee. So I'm, I have to own that I'm a Tennessean for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't consider myself from the Deep South and I think this play is set in the Deep South. And I also don't, I don't consider myself, I, I hope that I'm a little more urbane than the people in, <laughs> in Miss Firecracker contest. And so um, in that respect, like, I guess my southernness doesn't inform it, but I, as I said earlier, I think the people um, that inhabit this world that Beth Henley has created are familiar to us as southerners. And so that's, I think, one of the things that, that we identify with. And, um, and also the, the, the politeness, like sort of the dilemma of what you say and what you don't say in public and that you have to always be sort of Elaine, she says in the show, she said, I just, I just don't like that side of life. I just don't like to talk about it. And I think that's so Southern um, that we just don't, we're just polite, you know, no matter the circle, even if we don't mean it, we're polite. 
And so that aspect of the show I can really relate to. All right, another question? Well, all right. Well, thank you, Julie. Thank you. And please, everyone, come out and see the Miss Firecracker Contest, which opens one week from today at the Germantown Community Theater. Thank you so much. Thank you.